There we go. All right. So <clears throat> here we are. Welcome to this Zoom training. Um, I'm going to try and keep it at about an hour. Um, but especially new folks, people can stay on a little bit later if they have questions. Um, if yeah. So first things first, I'm going to kind of treat this like it's going to be a little bit like a normal training at LEA um, with a little bit of addition with the COVID-19 stuff. So um, first things first, especially for new folks, um, the threat of invasive species. I feel like probably most of you have at least a rudimentary knowledge of why we're doing this and why this is important. Um, for those of you who came and picked up their packet, this is not the right one, but each of you should have a handbook, a CBI handbook, and that has a lot of good information about why we're doing this, some of the history of the program, um, why it's important, how to talk to voters, some talking points. Um, so it's good to have a little bit of knowledge just in your back pocket so that if people ask you questions, you have at least a little bit of knowledge about why you're there doing it. But I mean, long story short is that invasive species can take over um, and just completely ruin the lake. And it pushes out all the natives and um, causes the ecology of the, lack of the lake to collapse. So, and historically, this program has been all about plants. We talk about invasive plants, milfoil and other invasive plants but we're trying to start talking about um, invasive animals as well, uh, like zebra mussels and other um, things that live in standing water. So that's that. I'm not gonna go into a big invasive species lecture because there's that good information in the, in the handbook. Um, as far as our program, this is our 20 first year, I believe, doing the CBI program at LEA. So uh, we started in 99 at uh, Long Lake and Harrison, and we've just expanded a lot, obviously, since then. Um, and the state of Maine kind of modeled their statewide program um, after what we started at LEA. I personally, um, I have a contract, we have a contract with the state of Maine, and I do all of their CBI training. There's about 700 inspectors in Maine. So I, I do like a, a big, we did 80, 80 people on Friday. So, um, Stephen is out. Stephen is. Really? I think I'm gonna, right. we'll call you. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit mute all. No offense. Um, okay. So, yeah, so that's a little bit about our program. Um, about the job. So courtesy boat inspections, uh, it is a courtesy program. So boaters are not required. It, it, if they say no, then they can launch without an inspection. I do not have any idea how boaters are going to react this year. Um, I don't know if more people are going to refuse inspection. I don't know if people are going to give you a hard time. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, uh, but Generally, in the past, 99% of boaters are totally cool, open, um, and are really are really nice and open to having inspections. And some of them will even thank you for being there. So hopefully, that is how this year will go. We'll see. All right. So when you're on the job, um, you're obviously representing LEA, but you're also representing the entire state program, the boat inspection program. So, um, and you also, if you work some of the some of the boat launches are managed by lake other lake associations. So Moose Pond, Tricky Pond, Pleasant Lake, uh, Hancock. Uh, most of them are um, they pay us to manage their boat launch. So people are going to stop by. They're gonna they're gonna want to talk to you and um, and they will give me feedback based on their interactions with you. So. Treat everybody, I mean, you're going to treat everybody with respect anyway. I know that about all of you, but um, uh, you never know who is on the other end of your conversation. So uh, just make sure that you are professional um, 
all the time. All right, so as far as behavior at the launch, obviously be respectful. Um, if it's a slow day, you can read a book, you can watch a movie on your phone or tablet, um, you can go fishing, you can dunk your feet in the water, um, but ob obviously when a, um, when a boat comes, you're on. So no matter what chapter you're on or how distracted you are, you are up out of your chair when the boater comes so that by the time they notice you, you are on. Um, they're not looking around or watching you finish your chapter in your chair. So, uh, yes. All right. Uh, everybody gets a shirt. If you don't, if you haven't gotten your packet yet, um, then I will get that to you. Uh, I am getting more extra large shirts. So if people need extra large, um, I'm getting more in the mail, hopefully this week. So we can distribute those. As far as, this is kind of new this year, um, lunch breaks generally, um, if you're working a double, which is a morning shift and an afternoon shift that you would usually be split, if you're working both, um, usually it's like, all right, well, you know, use the outhouse or, you know, use the restroom that's closest, that's a public place. and. And um, that's not going to happen this year because I don't, first of all, even if there are outhouses open, I don't want you guys using them. So um, anybody working a double, and that's not everybody, but anybody working a double um, or an eight hour shift, if you need to um, step away or if you have to like go back to your house to use the restroom, um, you can have up to an hour to, to leave the launch and go and do your thing. You're not going to get paid for that hour, but um, you're not going to be penalized for leaving your post because if you got to go, you got to go. And if it's not a remote area that has a nice big woodsy patch, um, you're going to need to, to find a place. And I don't want anybody to like not drink water <laughs> because they don't want to like get into a situation where they um where they need to go to the bathroom so um because that could be a much worse situation so uh for anybody that has worked for us in the past that's a new thing um because public restrooms aren't going to be um available all right so i have to say it every year don't sell your shirt don't cut the sleeves off your shirt don't modify the shirt in any way I have to say it because ev not every year, but some years um, we have incidents. So just don't do that. And it needs to be visible. So um, if it's a chilly day, you can wear something underneath it. You can wear a hoodie, but make it a zip up one so that you can unzip it and show that you um, are, are official. Um, clipboards make you a little bit official too, but you got to be wearing that uniform. Um, all right, new this year, you have to wear a mask during inspection. And I'm gonna show you guys a video um, of what that's gonna look like. But uh, I have extras at the office. This really, really nice lady um, sewed us 50 masks for summer staff. So that includes CBIs, um, people at the office, our, our full-time staff, water testing interns, um, plant control crew are all um, welcome to take one. And they're double-sided, they're really nice. I had some that were a little bit too tight. So if you're finding that you have a homemade mask, but um, it's only comfortable for really quick little things and you want another one, um, you can try one of these ones out. So those are at the office. I will say, she said she was gonna not make them all flowery, but they're all, variants of some kind of flower fabric. So um, just be aware of that. Some of them it's it's subtle, but um, just be aware of that. But anybody is welcome to take one or two of those if you need them. Uh, and then hand sanitizer. Uh, everybody has to have hand sanitizer. And um, this is, if you accidentally touch the boat, if you, um, you know, if you need to get a plant off the boat, you need to 
the likelihood that you grabbing a plant off a boat, you're going to be touching something that the boater touched is very unlikely. But as we know, you could also be a carrier. So if you touch something and then they touch it. So we're going to try uh, as much as possible to, um, to not touch the boat. But yeah. So I... <laughs> The hand sanitizer thing, supposedly it's coming in the mail on Thursday. So if you don't have any uh, for this weekend, um, I can put some bottles outside. Uh, those of you that are working on Friday, I'm probably going to do a little zip around to, to visit everybody. So I'll have bottles of hand sanitizer with me. Um, but if you don't get one from me, uh, Hopefully you have some in your life that you can use at least for the weekend. But I don't want, want you guys to use all use up all of your personal hand sanitizer for work because we're providing that. So um, Brian asked, what if you don't live locally? There are a few of you that are have a bit of a haul to get um, to get home. And we're gonna have to just talk about that separately because I, if there, if the outhouse and no public restrooms are open, um, you know, personally, patch of woods would would uh, would do it. But if anybody, um, like at the state park, you could probably sneak pretty far into the woods. But uh, we might have to just talk about that separately for the folks that live a little bit too far to be running home and back in an hour. So um, we can talk about that. All right, uh, so that's the new, those are the new things, the mask and the hand sanitizer and social distancing. So we are um, physically distancing at least six feet from the boater at all times. Um, if that becomes not possible, if a boater is not cooperative, we've all seen the stories about people in public being argumentative, being confrontational about uh, this whole situation, we back off. So if you ask, can you help me maintain a physical distance of at least six feet? And they talk about how they think it's all BS and, and they're, no, they're not going to do that. And they try to walk up to you and shake your hand, all that, just walk away. Um, even if you have a strong opinion, which some of you might, and want to like say, hey, listen, I'm gonna educate you, just don't. This is not the place. Um, very rarely do we have confrontations with voters in the past, but again, I have no idea how this is gonna go this year and people might be more irritable. So if, if a situation arises, just walk away um, because I don't, want, I don't want anything. I, yeah, that's not our job. So I am going to share a really professionally done video with you guys that I made last week um, to help demonstrate uh, the, the way we want inspections to, to be done this year. Those of you that have been doing this for a few years, you will know that every inspection is different. People react differently. Every boat is different. It's all different, but this is just kind of a basic one. Um, and we didn't do every scenario, but it is what it is. Again, I'm recording this whole thing and I'm gonna share the link to this, this video and other things. So you'll be getting an email soon that has um, just all the resources that I'm gonna share with you today so that if, um, if the sound's not working or if something's happening, um, you can just um, watch this later. All right, here we go is a guide for how to conduct a boat inspection within the restrictions set forth by Governor Mills during the COVID-19 pandemic. The goal is to prevent the spread of invasive species while keeping yourself and the boater safe. Always maintain a physical distance of at least six feet. Wear a cloth face covering during inspection. Clean your hands or use hand sanitizer often. Avoid touching any part of the boat, trailer, or other equipment. Do not assist boater with any part of launching or retrieving their watercraft. And do not hand the boater brochures, stickers, or other materials. Always wear a cloth mask when interacting with anyone at the boat ramp. 
have your mask in place before approaching the voter. How are you doing today? Great. How are you? I am doing very well. I was hoping it, uh, to do an inspection of your boat and trailer for aquatic plants. I'm in a hurry. Can it be quick? It can be really quick. Just a few minutes. That's fine then. Great. Uh, can you help me maintain the social distancing uh, at least six feet? Sure. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to start at the front of the boat and uh, if you could just come back here and pull the plug to drain any standing water, that would be great. Okay. Thanks. Try to maintain at least six feet of physical distance at all times. Invasive animals, such as zebra mussels, can survive in standing water, so always encourage the boater to pull any drain plugs. What was the last lake you were on? I went fishing on Lake Arrowhead last week. All right, um, thank you. I'm gonna try and touch the boat as little as possible. So if you could check your anchor and fishing gear, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. I found a plant on my anchor. What should I do with it? Oh, if you could just put it on that table over there, that would be great. I will get it identified later. Um, Lake Arrowhead does have invasive milfoil, so it's really good that we're doing this today and, and we'll get that plant identified. Feel free to um, grab a brochure and a sticker while you're over there. Do not hand anything to the boater. Have a designated area with a table or box where boaters can leave plants or pick up informational materials. Be mindful not to touch the boat or trailer during the inspection. It can be difficult to remember this, but it is an important step in keeping yourself and the boater safe. Remember that any part of the boat or trailer that goes in the water can catch plants, so make sure you visually inspect all parts of the trailer, including the carpeted bunks, wheel wells, and license plate. Leave the inside of the boat to the boater, but make sure you do a thorough inspection of the motor and propeller. Uh, I found a plant in your propeller. Uh, do you mind if I just remove that? No, oh, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Always ask the boater if you can remove any plants. If they say no or you are not comfortable, please ask them to do so themselves. If a boater refuses inspection, respectfully ask them to do it, offering to walk them through the process. You can also offer them an Infested Lakes brochure for more information. The winch stickers are designed to go on the trailer and remind boaters to clean, drain, and dry their boats when an inspector is not at the launch site to help. Thank you for your help today. Um, if there isn't an inspector the next time you go out, would you be able to do that inspection yourself? Sure, I can do that. Great, thank you. Uh, have a great day out on the water. Thank you. After the boater has left, gather any plant fragments into a sample bag to submit for identification later. When the inspection is complete, use hand sanitizer to remove any contaminants you may have inadvertently picked up during the interaction. Be sure you do this before touching anything, including any writing utensils, clipboard, or most importantly, before removing your mask. After 
sure your hands are clean, complete your inspection either on the paper form or on the mobile app. Boat inspections are essential to keeping our lakes free from invasive aquatic species. Thank you for helping us keep our lakes and each other healthy. All right, there it is. <laughs> so that was really fun. We tried to actually do it at a boat launch, but um, it's been so busy. <laughs> at the boat launches lately that it was that it was nearly impossible. So that's just my yard. Um, so that was kind of a way to illustrate, because some people are kind of having a hard time uh, visualizing what this is gonna look like. Uh, those of you that have done this in the past, this is a really easy job to physically distance. Um, you know, some people I think, their habit is to always shake hands with people, um, get um, kind of put your heads together sometimes and that um, we're just not doing this year. So I think people that have done it in the past are actually going to have a harder time adjusting um, because if they have a, a routine that they've always done, I think it'll be harder for them to um, to do that. So you might have noticed during during the video, despite the fact that it was a video and I had written the script, um, I had a hard time not touching the boat even knowing that it was it was just a video so that part where i went to grab the plant like that was not in the script i j it's just an automatic thing and and um so it, that's going to be i think the toughest part but asking the boater to, to do the inside of the boat i think is one of the most important things um so that we're we're really not touching things that that they have touched so um that is that and i'll share that with people again if they I'll, I'll share all the links um, if you want to watch it again. I'm not watching it again. If anybody's ever watched videos of themselves, it's not my favorite thing. So it's fine. Um, all right. So I'm going to go over the survey sheet. So this, this is the thing. We are asking that everybody submit your data through the app. Um, but... I personally am going to fill out an inspection form probably at the launch um, and then submit it via the app later. Um, some people, if you're at a really slow launch, um, it's you'll have a fine time just doing it um, in your phone, but, um, but I'm going to show you how to fill out the form and then how to put it into the app later because I've got the app on my computer because it is just easier for me. Um, but some people are so comfortable with their phones that it's that is totally fine. All right. Does anybody have questions about the the video? Um, you can use the chat box to to ask any questions. I think would probably be the the best way to go. So down at the bottom, you can click that chat and and type your type your message. Um, all right, so I'm going to share uh, the inspection form and go through that. All right, so here she is. Um, those of you that have done this before, this has not changed at all from last year. Um, when you first start your shift is when you fill out kind of the top part. Um, number of trailers present upon shift arrival that that's actually pretty important because we do inspect the trailers when we get there there have been a couple of occasions where people have gotten there and there's been invasive plants on the trailer um, at uninfested lakes so we do always uh, inspect the trailers um, just in case if you do find something you can um, write down their license plate number, let me know, and we can get that plant identified. All right, so lake name, Hancock Pond, ramp name. So the ramp is the Denmark ramp. I, I'll send out a list of all the ramp names to you guys. And then the town that it's in, um, date, shift time. So we do military time uh, for everything. So um, obviously that's just normal, but... Um, but if you have an afternoon shift, we want it in military time. Um, your name, I pre-filled the host agency, and if you're volunteer or paid, that's what that VP is. 
Um, and then um, check here if you encourage self-inspection. So at the end of the video, you saw that I asked him to do the inspection himself if, um, if nobody's there. So um, it's easy enough to do. They always say yes. <laughs> I don't know if they're actually doing it, but they always say yes. So um, there's that. All right, so the first thing, if a boat, when a boat comes, um, if it's motorized, you're writing down um, the state abbreviation and their entire bow number. So that's the number on the side of the boat. Um, the, uh, if you don't know where that is, that's in the handbook as well, uh, the location of the bow number. Uh, and it's numbers and letters. So the key is um, boats are supposed to have a lake and river protection sticker, um, which this year is red. And some people write down the number on that sticker um, and that's all numbers and that is wrong. So you need to write down um, the, the registration number. And sometimes they don't have their numbers on the boat. So this year we're not gonna ask them to hand us their registration so we can write down the actual number. Um, if it's not present, just skip it. Um, current year sticker, so that's a yes or no question. Um, do they have the sticker? Do they not? I guess um, the wardens were kind of letting it slide for a little bit, but I think as of, um, it might be May 30th or 30 whatever, um, the game wards are going to start holding people accountable for not having their sticker. So people can get it online, you can register your boat online, um, and uh, I'll give you guys the link for that. But it's not our responsibility. We are not enforcement at all. So we can say, hey, it's up to a $500 fine if you don't have your sticker um, and encourage them to get one, but um, they, they're perfectly, they're allowed to launch if they don't have it. And then NM is non-motorized. So canoes, kayaks, paddle boards. I had a sailboat one year. Um, we do inspect non-motorized vessels. They don't have to have a sticker, um, but they can carry plants and, um, and invasive animals just the same. So there's not as many places for them to hide, but um, we do that. Uh, next is the previous water body visited. So you ask where they were last. Um, and this goes for um, if they're leaving, if you come on your shift and, and a boat is leaving, you didn't get them going in, you're gonna ask where they were before the current lake. Um, because we know that they just came out of that one. So, um, so this person came from Sebago Lake. Sebago Lake is an infested lake. So uh, that kind of heightens our, our um, awareness. And if you know it's an infested lake or if they're from out of state, you treat that as suspicious and you do an extra thorough inspection um, because uh, out of state folks is, I mean, very likely they came from a lake that is infested um, because out-of-state lakes, a majority of them are infested. So uh, town and state to the best of their ability. Um, they may not know the town, but um, try to get that information. And then the time that they entered and whether or not any plants were found. So I'll go over what you should do when plants are found um, in, a, in a minute. And then the second inspection was a non-motorized um, coming out. Well, they only go to Hancock Pond. So that's why it says Hancock Pond because they are just in there all the time. Uh, and then they were leaving and there were plants found. So that is the form. I fill, you can't tell, but I filled that in in pencil. Um, so my, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it out in pencil, bring it home, and um, put it into my computer and then erase the form. And probably there's gonna be a shelf life or, or of how many times you can actually erase the form before it's useless. But um, if you have sent the data, you don't need to, to keep a physical copy of the form. And um, so we're gonna try and save paper a little bit if we can. All right, so that is the form. I'm going to stop sharing that, see if anybody chatted to me. No questions, fantastic. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do next is share the, um, the app. 
So this is survey one, two, three, and I have it, I have it on my phone, but I also have it on my computer. So I'm going to show you um, what it looks like on the computer. It's, it's the same as on your phone. Um, it's just bigger. <laughs> I like doing it on my computer because I can use my keyboard. I can use my mouse. It's not just um, using my finger. So, um, so I'm going to share that so that you guys can kind of see what that looks like going through. I'll probably just do the form that I just showed you because um, that's easiest. Um, so Leanne just asked um, for out-of-state boats with no lake, lake and river protection sticker, what do we do? Um, in your handbook, there is a QR code and apparently the young people are not using QR codes anymore, but they're pretty handy. Um, so it's a code right here on page five. Uh, and that leads to the store where you can buy the Lake and River Protection stickers. So it's Inland Fisheries and Wildlife website. And that's really just for um, out of state. The, they raised the, the fee um, to $35 this year. So it used to be $20. They raised the fee for out-of-staters to $35. Um, and uh, so a Maine resident wouldn't want to do that. So if, if a Maine resident doesn't have their sticker, um, it's because they haven't registered their boat this year. Um, Brian asked, uh, who might find them for not having a sticker? That is the game wardens. So the likelihood that somebody will get a ticket or get um, uh, in trouble for that is fairly low, but the wardens are out there. Um, and for Sebago Lake region um, and the Songo River, the wardens, the wardens will hang out at the Songo Lock and just wait for boats to go into the lock and just give out tickets. So it can happen. Um, they try to visit different lakes every day and go out and um and find people who are are breaking breaking the law um so the sticker fee they do give out um several uh uh tickets every year to people and it's up to five hundred dollars so it's usually not five hundred dollars but if somebody's being a jerk just like a speeding ticket you know if you're if you're rude and obnoxious and combative then you're gonna get nailed um but uh usually they're they're pretty forgiving of that. So like police aren't going to do that. They're not going to give out tickets for that. Um, very few law enforcement are, that's not on their radar. So, but the wardens, they're definitely giving that out. Um, the town of Naples now, their harbor masters can give those out. So Tricky Pond, um, I guess it's really just Tricky Pond. If people are out there, um, the, the um, harbor masters, there's like 10 of them um, are out there patrolling and um, I bet they're gonna get a lot of people this year. This is a new a new thing that the Harbor Masters can actually give that ticket out. All right so I'm gonna share my screen and um, just share this survey one two three with you guys. Um, if you haven't been successful at um, uploading this uh just let me know we can um we can talk about it at, at the end of the meeting um other people don't have to be here for that so so here's this i'm gonna maximize it my computer takes a minute um and and the new if anybody has the old version from last year of of survey if you had it on last year you need to uninstall survey one two three either from your phone or your computer and reinstall it um, because they've they've done a new app and the nice thing about the new app is that it tells you if there's an update available i'm not going to do that right now but um that's just a nice feature i'm going to click on that um, and I'm going to continue without update because who knows how long that would take and I'm not going to do it in the middle of our training. Um, so it'll let me. A lot of those updates are um, organizations, um, organizations um, adding names, adding inspector names. So it's not something that we 
need to worry about too much. All right, so hit collect. And it'll load. Most of you will have an easier time. My computer is old and apparently tired, but it will work eventually. There we go. All right. Okay, so you don't have to think too much about this information. Um, shift date, what was my date on here? It was the 14th. Uh, visit date, yes. Agency, so this is where having the um, type is nice. You can also hit this arrow on the side and do the drop down. Um, this is all the organizations in the state use this app, so they, um, so they're all in here. Um, ramp name, again, you can use the drop down or you can type it and it will give you the ramp. It also has this map feature. I'm not 100% sure why they have the map feature, but it is what it is. All right, I'm going to use myself as the inspector. I am paid. Uh, my shift time, you do have to do the zero at the beginning. So zero, 700, I had two trailers. And once you get that all filled out, so that's kind of the top of the um, inspection form information. So once you get that, you can click this arrow down on the bottom. And then the question is, did you do any inspections during your shift? Um, every once in a while, you'll have a super slow day. And sometimes you don't have any inspections, but you worked your shift. So you need to submit something. Um, any, even if you have no inspections, you're gonna click no and, um, and send your survey in um, even though you didn't have anything. So, because it's tracking time. So it's not just tracking inspections, it's also tracking time. Um, so, but we did, uh, and then, hit the plus mark to add inspections. So don't use current time. So that's kind of a nice feature if you're doing it in the moment on your phone or tablet at the, at the launch, you can, um, you can just say, yeah, use current time. You don't have to type it in. So, but I'm not doing that. Um, I, um, I just decided I'm gonna make something up. So I'm gonna do a 1045 inspection. Yes, the boat is motorized. Sure, they have their sticker. Um, this is nice, you can start typing in, or again, you can drop down, um, and it's got, I mean, it's got Alberta. So, but it's Maine. Um, put in the bow number. So this is a nice feature. Um, last water body visited, you can, you can put same as current water body, and it will actually just fill that in. Those of you that have done this before, there's a lot of people that just vote on the same lake all the time. Um, so that's a nice feature. Uh, different lake in Maine. We'll do Sebago. Nope. Okay, go. Um, this bold means that it is in, uh, infested. So that'll have um, all the infested lakes will be bold. Um, just as a reminder. And then we'll do Casco. And they were entering. So this is the plants found deal. Um, this is whether you're doing the paper form or not. So if you find plants, you have to answer this question if it's invasive or not. So probably maybe none of you are gonna have the plant expertise to say this is definitely invasive or this is not invasive. Um, those of you that have done it before and found plants before and shared those with me um, probably have an idea of some of the native plants that you don't have to worry about. But if you find a plant and it looks suspicious, a really cool thing in the back of the handbook, there's some color photos. I don't know if you can even see that, but there's some color photos of the invasive and some native plants in Maine. Um, but if you do not know, um, you type, you put in, I don't know. Um, and then the question is, who did you give the plant or photo to for ID? For us, you're gonna put Lake Association. Um, that would be me. 
and uh, what I'm asking is that you you definitely put your collect the sample you've all got little sample bags um, you're going to fill that out and keep the sample but you're gonna send me the very best pictures that you can take of those plants and um, and then I will work on identifying it from the photo if I think it's suspicious if I can't tell what it is from the picture I'll have you bring me the physical sample but um, we're gonna try photos first it just reduces again reduces contact um, between all of us and it's just easier so people don't have to drive out of their way to bring that sample to LEA so um, we're gonna try photo first but hold on to the sample um, and you're gonna want to keep it cold so you might have some plant samples in your fridge at home which is fine um, if you do know that it's not invasive you can put no um, if I'm there at the launch with you and you find it and I say yes it is you can type in yes um, we do have plant experts on staff that would be me um, so we can identify almost every plant this is a nice feature new this year view list of inspections so it will actually list out um, all the inspections you've done so that's especially nice if you are um, entering this after the fact you can click on that and see okay I've I've entered them all I'm done and I'm gonna just end the shift shift end time was 1100 when did you complete this form after the shift so either at right at the ramp or after shift I'm gonna type test into the comments you are not going to do that but the DEP has asked me to put test in there so that they know that that's not real data because some people have already started and check so now continue the survey save survey so if you are in the middle of typing your your form into the um, into the into the app and something comes up you have to stop you can save it um, you can continue it if you accidentally went to this page or you can send now if you are offline so if you're at a ramp where you don't have internet um, there will be another option saying it's going to say your de your device is, is offline please share it when you get to a um, to someplace with internet so I'm going to send it now and that's that cool so that is on the desktop um, uh, Kim just asked is it survey one two three for ArcGIS yes yes green box with the checked yeah so uh, ArcGIS is the is the parent company they develop survey one two three as a, a pretty cool tool that people can use in the field to collect data not just CVI um, anybody can can create a survey we we have a watershed survey form that we use so um, survey one two three is the app and then you have to create a survey and put it into the app which is what that's that CVI form is um, so plant sample bag everybody got a couple of these in their in their packets um, you just fill I would suggest filling this out before you put water in a plant in there um, and you're gonna put the boat registration number um, where they were last the date well you can see it um, entering or leaving your name Elia you don't have to put like kind of the bottom half of the information because um, this is designed to be mailed to an external organization that does the identification um, and since we can do it in-house at LEA you don't have to fill out the whole thing but you're gonna hold on to this with the plant um, until I say no I really need to see that or yeah you can just dump that out in the woods um, so a couple other things that I gave you in your packets the clean drain dry sticker um again we're not handing anything to the boater so in my little video i had a little portable um table if you don't have anything like that you can just have a, a cardboard box or something or or a plastic box um 
to put materials on. I don't know how many people are going to want to be taking materials this year. Again, um, this is a nice sticker that they can put on their um, on their boat winch, and uh, just to remind them to to do the clean drain dry. If there isn't an inspector, um, the infested lakes brochures. I have like a billion of these. And again, not sure how many people are actually going to take them, but it's got a map of all the infestations in Maine, uh, which is kind of nice. There's a couple of new infestations this year, um, which is not very nice, but if anybody wants to have a conversation about that, that's there. Um, so this has a lot of good information in it. So if somebody's curious and they want to take one, um, have those available to people. And I did give everybody a handful of those in the packet. Um, sample bags, winch stickers, brochures, handbooks, I have plenty of at the office. You guys are lucky enough that I manage the supply chain for the entire state, so I have just like a ton of everything. Uh, so if you run out of things, great, um, let me know and, and we can arrange for you to get more. So that is data entry, uh, which is important obviously. Um, but we got to talk about kind of the, the nitty gritty administrative stuff here. Um, oh, one last thing. Again, I think I already said it, but if you don't feel safe for any reason, you back off. Um, if you really don't feel safe, you leave. Okay. We had an issue last year with somebody being harassed um, and she just kind of like took it and that's not okay. You leave. Um, and tell me, her mom contacted me to tell me that she had been harassed on her on her shifts, multiple, and um, that's not okay. So you tell me and you leave um, because that's not okay. And if it's really, really bad, you call the police um, because, yeah. Okay, so administrative stuff. Um, email, I think everybody here is pretty good with email, um, getting back to me on things. Um, if I have questions, once once the schedule's out, if you don't want to pick up any shifts, you can just like not look at that schedule anymore uh, as I update it. But uh, if you do want to pick up shifts, um, you need to let me know. Um, I think I think everybody is all set as far as payroll um, is concerned. Uh, I think everybody is is updated in the system. Jenny hasn't said otherwise, so I think we're good there. So everybody's in the system and can get paid, uh, which is fantastic. All right, as far as getting paid, um, we get paid every two weeks and you have to submit a time card and the time cards get submitted Sunday afternoons. And the first pay period actually ends on the 24th, which is this weekend. So if you work Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, you're going to be submitting a time card this week for, for this pay period. So I'm going to share the um, time log with you. Those of you that got your packets, I gave everybody a paper form. Um, and my plan is that you are going to submit those electronically, fill out the electronic one I'm going to send you. But if you can't do that, you can fill out the paper one and, and just send me a picture. All right, so sharing screen once again. Where are you? There it is. Good, great. All right, so here's the time log. Um, it is a fillable PDF. So you should be able to fill it in. Um, pay date, the list of pay dates is down here at the bottom. So if you get confused about where we're at, um, it's every two weeks and it ends on Sunday. So if you work hours on Sunday, you gotta fill out a, a timesheet. So um, this one that I just did, you type in all of your shifts. So the date of that one was May 14th, uh, Hancock Pond in Denmark. The site code, the site codes are all listed down here as well. Do, 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 do. Um, 
is a 700 to, oops, 700 to 1100. Get that out of there. So that is four hours. And then if you have more shifts, you add them in there. Um, total hours four. You save it up as whatever you want to save it. Save it as, I would probably save it with the name of the um, pay period, but whatever you want to do. Um, I don't want to do that right now because my computer is so slow that it'll take forever to save. Um, and then you email me that document and that's how you get paid. Um, the time cards have to be with me by 8 a.m. on Monday morning. So Jenny O'Connor um, does all of our payroll and she has to have these all of these time cards um, by 8 a.m. on Monday. If they're not here, if you forget, I'll probably try and call you early in the morning on Monday. Um, but it, it is a real pain for her if they're not here. So I will try to remind you on Fridays to do that. Um, on, uh, on Sunday, I would suggest just sending it Sunday night. Um, so that is the timesheet I will be sending out that um, soon. Now that all, basically, this is the last CBI training, I'll be sending out an email with, um, with links to things I just shared along with um, the timesheet. And I'm recording this whole thing so people can watch that again. Um, you can fast forward to how to fill out the form. You can fast forward to how, how to fill out the, the timesheet um, so that if you have any questions, you can go back and look at that again. Um, anything else? Oh, everything is direct deposit this year. And uh, we've done direct deposit for a while, but also the pay stubs are going to be emailed this year. We're not going to do any paper uh, pay stubs in the mail. So that's all going to be emailed, and um, I will uh, I'll send out a little thing about that. The password to to get those online is the last four digits of your social security number. So I'll send that out. Um, Kim is asking, what is your username and password for the app? You actually don't need one. So once the app is on your phone, you close it and forget. You, yeah, you just ignore it, and then you go back into the directions. So close the app. You go back to my email directions um, and you need to click on uh, a, a web address that I don't have it open right now, but um, it is a short little code that you click on and that brings you to the actual CBI survey that you have to download and that goes into the app and then you can use it without a username or password. Um, so Kim and everyone, I will send you that, just that short link. So once you have the app on your phone or computer, you have to close out of it and go back to the instructions form, click on that second hyperlink, and, and then that'll bring you to a site and you open that in the field app. So we'll get it, we'll get it figured out. Um, so, and anything else oh schedule changes so if you are sick or something comes up and you need to um, you need to not work your shift what you need to do is hit reply all on one of my group emails so if you hit reply all that will communicate with every every CBI and myself so you just say hey I can't work my shift at the state park on such and such a date from 9 to 3 um, is anybody available to take that? And then that is not the only part of this process. Um, if somebody responds to you and says, yes, I can work that, you need to let them know, okay, I got this, you're working it. Um, we've had situations in the past where three people could pick up that shift and all three of them showed up to the launch at the same time. So you need to have confirmation that yes, you are the one um, that is going to take on that shift. And hopefully we do have a lot of people that are willing to, to take on extra shifts. So um, if you can't find anyone, just let me know. Um, like, hey, I tried really hard, but I'm super sick and I cannot go to work. 
I'm not going to say tough. <laughs> you have to go to work even though you, you're, you're puking. So, um, yeah, so just let me know if that happens. Um, also, if you're sick, especially with symptoms of COVID-19, um, do not go to work and tell me because um, that's obviously we're not doing that. Um, you can wear a mask, but you may still be contagious. So um, if that happens, let me know. And um, you're, you're, you're out for two weeks. <laughs> um, and uh, so obviously if you have serious symptoms and you get tested and you have it, you're out for two weeks and, and um, everybody in your circle is also quarantined for two weeks. So we can talk about that. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, my plan is that with the precautions we're taking and hopefully you're taking in your personal lives, um, that we're all going to stay um, safe and healthy this summer. So that's my, that's my plan. Um, so that is a lot of information all at once, um, but that is the training. Um, if people have additional questions and want to stay on the line with me, uh, maybe about the app, about any of it, um, you can stay on the line, but if you are, if you think you're good to go, as soon as I send you some of these links, um, you guys can, can check out.